This is Twit. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, except for those people who had NDAs signed and uh, special relationships with Samsung, we find the Samsung 970 Pro 512 gigabyte 970 Evo 250 500 gigabyte and one terabyte NVMe review. So, yep. What's the word, man? Uh, so the word is, uh, generally speaking, uh, it is about like a five to ten percent increase in all of the things over the equivalent nine sixties, basically. Nice. Um, that's probably the simplest way to put it. It's very much an incremental style upgrade. There are some changes, like with the nine sixty series. If you might remember, the Pro, Samsung did some trick where they put the DRAM into the, the package of the controller to make more room for more flash packages. And then you had this sort of backwards thing where the Pro model was available in higher capacities than the Evo, even though TLC can store more bits for a given space than MLC. Um, that's no longer the case here. Uh, they've just gone back to like basics. Uh, these are all the same kind of PCB layout. They all have mm -hmm. external DRAM, which is going to make it, you know, cheaper for Samsung to produce. Whether or not that results in a lower cost price is up for debate, as we'll discuss is probably towards the tail end of this part of this discussion. But um, uh, you know, it's kind of a simpler thing. They upped um, other differences. They upped the Evo to a five-year warranty. Evo has historically been three-year warranty. Um, so now they both have the same warranty period. Uh, yeah. It's really down to how much do you want better performance? Because the Pro still offers better performance, even though the Evo is still pretty darn good performance. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're, are if, we talking you, about ten percent difference? Are we talking about twenty-five percent difference? Are we talking about you know single digits in performance? So if you go to the uh, if you go to the client Q depth weighted page of my review, in the first chart. You will see that the let's compare, say, a one terabyte 970 Evo, which is the third entry in that chart. Uh, the blue line is important here. This is your read, like what you're basically gonna. This this number translates to like the feel of the SSD in a system. Mm -hmm. So 970 Evo comes in at around 22,000. So that's like your equivalent IOPS that you would see running kind of normal stuff in a system at normal Q depths. So 22,000 goes up 27.6 with a 970 Pro. Um, so that's more than single-digit changes. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's definitely a difference. Whether or not that's a difference that you will actually feel trying to use the system will depend on how current that system is. Because when you mm -hmm. start pushing IOs as high as these things do, you start running into, if you're running a typical game or a typical you know, application workload, you you kind of shift the bottleneck around, right? As you speed up the storage mm -hmm. device, now the bottleneck shifts off to the CPU, trying to actually do stuff with that information, right. et cetera. So, you know, if you're on modern, current kind of bleeding edge hardware, you're probably going to care about that difference between an Evo <laughs> or a Pro. Um, you know, if you, if you really are of that mentality that I have to have the newest, fastest, everything. For the rest of us, myself included, even, even though I'm kind of a storage nut, I would be perfectly happy with Evo level performance. Um, one one way to uh, point that out a little bit better and put it into a little bit better context regarding these particular products is if you look at the uh, mixed or mixed burst results, which is where the system is actually trying to do something in the background mm -hmm. while trying to do reads. Um, we'll just skip like right to the. Uh, go down more and more and more. Go to the read service time chart. It's like the second blue chart. Uh, so this is how long did it take to do a bunch of things that totaled up to four gigabytes worth of reads on, you know, with these different products, right? And uh, you'll notice that, you know, 970 Evo, it's like four, almost five seconds, 4.7 seconds. You go to a 960 Pro, uh, that was four seconds, which was, you know, again, faster. But the 970 Pro drops that to 3.7 seconds. So look at the kind of hairs you're splitting here, right? You're you're now down to a 0.3 second delta from the previous generation Pro to the current one. You know, out of out of four seconds, 0.3 out of four. Um, and if you scroll way down <laughs> past that next crazy long chart to the crazy long chart after it, it's longer than the VJ might realize it is because it's every SSD we've tested. Mm -hmm. Pretty long. Okay, there you go. Um, so 3.7 seconds was the 970 Pro. 
if you go all the way up to the bleeding edge, like 900p Optane SSD from Intel, that only gets you down to 3.4. So that's only another 0.3. Basically, you're 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 getting into the whole diminishing returns thing here. Right. right? Yes, the thing. Yes, they're going faster, but how much faster can they possibly go to the point where other things are limiting you? Right. Um. And and that's kind of where we are here at least as far as our <laughs> test suite and our results uh, come up with compared to you know the landscape of products that are out there. So yes, it's faster. Yes, it's actually halfway to an Optane drive as far as the time it takes the new model to do stuff over the old model for the pros. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you're, you're splitting hairs compared to, you know, is your, I don't know if your time is so valuable that you're measuring it in tenths of a second to do four gig worth of activity on a system. I mean, I'm I'm so. sure there's you know, there's there's probably people that are dealing with like Wall Street trading systems or you know, super Oh yeah, but those guys those guys are doing all their stuff in RAM. That's true. Like they they're not even this, this is not even in the same kind of ballpark as 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 those folks. When latency is super mm -hmm. critical like that, they shift completely like they're using Optane stuff and they're using RAM, right? Um but you know, these drives are for, it's not even an enterprise drive here. This is a consumer drive. It's just meant for, you know, you and me to put in our, in our systems and use, <laughs> right? Um, so here's uh, kind of the thing where I wish Samsung would have done better given the more simplistic design as the pricing mm -hmm. towards the end of my article. Uh, the pros are coming in at a little bit over 60 cents a gig and the Evos Whoa. are still running around 45 cents a gig, which is, mm -hmm. I know you say, whoa, but that's roughly where the previous generation was sitting. I know, um, but given that some of the drives you've seen, the, especially in the last couple of weeks, that's just so I agree expensive. With you. <laughs> um, I agree with you. Samsung is still able to get away with this because, I mean, they have a pretty, they've been in this thing for a long time. Their drives are very proven, you know, now, and they're still the, the fastest game in town. Right? right, so if you absolutely, if you absolutely need the fastest, that that's the price you have to pay. Yes, you're right, Patrick. There is totally the Western Digital and Sandisk <laughs> offering we just reviewed last week, and that thing is a very impressive drive, and it actually beat the 960 Evo in a couple of our tests. Um, <laughs> and it's a way cheaper drive, um, mm -hmm. you know. And if you're worried about the cost, go with that. If you're worried about the performance and you absolutely want the fastest thing, Samsung is. Again, the only game in town now that they've released these 970s. I I gotta say uh, I love the uh, the mixed burst throughput, the read service time for four gigabytes chart, um, and also <laughs> looking at the simultaneous the the mixed burst throughput. <laughs> yeah, well, as you sort of describe, but you know when you look at the simultaneous mixed burst throughput, um, where you're looking at yeah. one, it, it illustrates so dramatically the difference between write and read speeds, which is I, I feel like write speeds are some place where um, it's pretty obvious that there's there's you know still magical work to be done. Not that it's going to happen, um, you know. Well, but you have to realize th you have to realize the work the write workload for that is yeah. a much harder workload than the read workload for that test. Um, I know. So, but the difference between yeah, 100 I mean, it's, miles it's an hour in Bonneville and 700 miles an hour uh, an hour on <laughs> Bonneville is a lot of work too. But but what I'm saying is if you think about it, you know. Saving out files if you're video editing and dealing with terabytes of data or gigabytes of data, I should say, uh, to be a yeah. mildly rational human being, um, you know, the, like I, the, I feel like we're going to these are getting so fast. We're going to be thinking a lot less about uh, read speeds and we are about write speeds. And the other thing is, is, is looking at that uh, read service time, that mixed burst throughput, you start to realize just exactly how slow a lot of the early hard drives are. Um, you oh, know, yeah. I've got an, I've got a first generation Intel drive and I'm like, I bet that benchmark would be in the three hundreds <laughs> for that particular drive. Oh, for um, the time. So are you talking yeah. about the X 25 M the the first Intel, uh, SSD? Yeah. yeah. Uh, because I mean, that's actually so slow, in the chart. Actually, it is. It's a hundred and 113.6 seconds, my friend. Much it's faster like about 15th from the bottom. <laughs> wow. Well, you look at that. Yeah, it's there. I, I went way back when I did this test suite. I had to make sure that it worked on everything, all the way back to the first Intel SSD. Oh, goodness. So, uh, yeah, 113.6 seconds versus uh, 3.7. <laughs> but even in inexpensive, 
drive from this year is going to be five times faster than that. Oh, uh, sure. Or, or move yeah. five times more data or even consider oh, yeah. more. But Ab- it's, absolutely. It's, it's pretty crazy to look at. Um, you feel, I mean, it seems like for, in terms of a sweet spot, if you're into a, a high performance drive, uh, it seems like the, the, that Western digital sand disc is, is definitely the sweet spot. What about, uh, you know, if for, or I should say for performance is, you know, what's your favorite, you know, is the, my SSD, is that your favorite for the least expensive NVMe drive you can get, or should people stick yeah. with regular yeah, actually the, the, SSDs? The, the, the my digital discount uh, SBX specifically that's meant to be like their like budget as budget as you can go uh, product. It's only two lanes of PCI Express. It's not even four. Um, but again, you're not that worried about straight line speed if you're trying to go for super budget. Sure. You just want a responsive SSD that's again faster than you know the older SSD that you have in your system. And uh, yeah, uh, the SBX series is is, is great a great solution for that. Um, especially if you catch them on a sale, they actually do go on sale, even though like they're already super cheap in the first place. Like, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, good product, good price. And then if you want a little more performance, still a good price, I would say, then you go over to your Western digital slash sand desk thing. And then if you want the next rung up 970 Evo, uh, honestly, with the launch of these, uh, keep an eye out for deals on 960s. You're going to have people trying to clear out their stock. Um, because the 970 is the newest, you know, baddest thing out. Um, so, you know, we just look for prices there. That's actually, a, you know, it's a, for, that applies to almost all PC hardware. Like if you're looking for the yeah. deal on something, especially since there's such a slim, you know, update in performance between 960 and 970, um, you know, maybe you're worried about three-year warranty versus five-year warranty on a 960 Evo, but honestly, if it doesn't fail in three years, it's probably not going to fail in five. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it there that much. Uh, the rule of PC hardware, wait till there's something you want more and then buy the one that you wanted until you heard about that new one. And that's yeah, the sweet the price spot. Comes down. <laughs> yeah, generally. <laughs> yeah. And, until the supply is gone, you know, and then the price right. actually starts going up on the, on the one generation old because it's, people are still trying to find it and sellers think they can make an extra buck on it. Right. They do. 